My oldest child, who is now 24 years old, my daughter, Ireland, you have a child, and of course that launches you into the world of contemporary, or at least at that time contemporary, children's media and programming. I grew up in a different reality. I grew up in Bugs Bunny and, uh, you know, uh, Popeye and these silly, you know, and, and, and all the Warner Brothers cartoons. But at that time, Thomas was everywhere. And you'd hear that song. Dun, da, 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 da. And, I, and I love the naivete of it. I love the innocence of it. I thought it was really very, very, I love the simplicity of it. I think it was Britt reached out to me and Carlin had done some of it. I think Ringo was before me. And she asked me if I would voice a, a season of the show. And the key is that I met Britt. And when I met Britt, who's this incredibly unusual woman, and she told me the story about how she got the books, the Railway series, and I just adored Britt. And when she said to me, do you want to do this show? I said, sure. Very often when you do projects in this business, it's who's doing the asking. And, and, and there is you know, kind of an unavoidable likability factor. And I just really wasn't, loved Britt. She was just a great lady and we did a couple seasons of that. And then they asked me to do the film, which is a whole other saga. Important day, Mr. C? <laughs> it is a very important day. I think for me, and I tell people this all the time, if ever I'm talking to students, if you're interacting with student actors or what have you, that among the most difficult things to do in acting, I think, is to be light and joyful and uh, to be happy. We all have anger inside of us, we all have pain inside of us and uh, difficult things we've gone through and in acting it's, 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 it's easier to cry than it is to laugh. It's easier to give some very admonishing speech in a courtroom or what have you than it is to be a protagonist in a children's fantasy film and to keep it warm and simple and to have a positive lilt in everything you say. What I said to myself was, you can go too far, and, and I'm sure some would argue I went too far, but I do come from that mindset where you're sitting there going, what time is it, Bob? You know, you just you keep every, every, everything you say, what time is it? You seem puzzled, Mr. Conductor. Well, I am puzzled. This place looks like the island of Sodor, but how would Burnett Stone travel there without gold dust? Sparkle's been the only way to make the trip since the lost engine disappeared. You know, to keep everything light, bright, warm, and simple. That's tough to do. And some days you come to work and you're just not in the mood to be like, you know, we better head back to the station. And uh, that kind of thing. But that was the job, I felt, was to keep that character someone who was uh, like a host. You're the host. The other characters are going through everything. And you're there kind of as a guide to help the kids go through the whole story. Anyway, I just came to say goodbye. I have to go now. Right now? Why, yes, Stacy. I have to make sure that everything is safe and sound on the island of Sodor, just as I try to do here. When we did the TV show, it was one situation, which was, it was Brit's baby, and she called all the shots, and we'd go into a booth, and she would give you very simple directions, and she, you know, slow this down, pace this up, come in quicker here. When we did the movie, which was not the TV show, it was live action. We were there performing, which was a big difference, and behaving and, and wearing wardrobe and staging scenes and so forth. It's a beautiful day. I mean, we're down, but we're not out. No, we're out. But we are not down. I'm always of the belief that there's a right amount of takes. There's a right amount. It could be four, it could be eight. It could be 11. And, and again, with this kind of children's program, there's an ear you have. You develop an ear. Everything is sound in children's programming. Now my gold dust really is all gone. And if I can't find the source for making more, I know how bad the consequences will be. I saw them in my dream last night. My family never really told me what to do in a gold dust crisis. They only said, if you can't remember the clue, the windmill will remind you. But where is the windmill? Cool. Hey, can we do one more right away? I remember with the Mr. Conductor thing, I wanted to kind of keep it positive and warm and sweet even, but not the same throughout. So there were sometimes I think I 
I, I, I lost my, my train of thought and I thought I was on a Scorsese film. So I thought, let's do, let's do 30 takes of me saying, it's four o'clock. You want to give the director what they want. Most of the directors I've worked with, most, not all, but most are people who I admired a lot and wanted to make their movie. When you start out doing a movie, the director's the one that makes the movie, not you. You're an element of it. And uh, filmmaking is an extraordinarily collaborative process. And you want to make sure that you're doing your part. And, I'm, and there were a few directors that I wanted to please as much as Britt because I just liked her so much personally. What is that? That's right, it's sugar, Diesel. And if I throw this in your tank, it'll seize you up for good. Make the most of tonight, Twinkle Toes, because you won't like tomorrow. Mara had had some difficulties before we started rolling the camera, and she came to work, and we were all very concerned about that. Was she? I think her mother had passed away, and she was very, very despondent about that. I remember, that was something that cast a shadow over a lot of what we did, was her emotional state as a result of this obviously terrible thing. I have to tell you something, Mr. C. I heard a train whistle, and it sounded like it was coming from the mountain. Mountain? I just remembered another part of the clue. Stoke up the magic in the mountain, and the lady will smile. But we need more information, Lily. And I know that your grandpa could help. Brit uh, had partners in a company that were doing this with her. And as with most movies you, you, you do, there's a swarm of non-creative people giving you their opinions of the film. And the thing I love about Britt was, like all good directors, she didn't transmit any of her tension on the set of the film. The Brit that I worked with in the booth of the TV show was the same Brit that showed up every day for the film. And I think that there's a part of me that what was difficult about the film in that way was that she thought she'd proven herself. And she didn't have to do that anymore. And have to kind of convince men of what she could do, or what she was capable of. There did seem to be a bit of that when we made the film of, of Britt Allcroft having to go back to a place that she thought she'd earned her, her, her position. She'd earned the right to have that creative self-determinism about the film. She would go off and have conversations with people, not a lot, I don't want to exaggerate, and then come back and not look very happy, and then shake that off and engage with us. She was always the warm, positive conductor, if you will. Uh, she was Mrs. Conductor, Ms. Conductor, of the filmmaking experience and keeping it positive under those two difficult things. You know, Junior, there is a railroad. With palm trees? One or two. And sunshine? Sunny spells. I'll take it, what's the way? This is the way. When I did it, I, I felt, you know, when we did the TV program, programming at the time of the film, it was right at the height of that. It was really, really like everywhere. If I had people walk up to me and they would stop and they'd snap their fingers and they would turn to their little kid and they'd say, do you know who this is? They'd say, this is Mr. Conductor. Some of them got it. The parents were almost always more excited than I was about it. They sent me a chest that was a promotional gift they sent to my daughter. I, I probably should have just taken this and put it in, the, in storage somewhere. They gave me a chest that was designed like Thomas. So one end of the chest had the face of the character and the back was the rear. And then you opened up the middle was a chest and it was filled with Thomas toys. And it was stunning, I loved it. And it was at the foot of my daughter's bed for a while. I don't know what happened to it, but I, I wish I had it back. I, I, I put it in my office right now if I could. Well, see you in shining time. <laughs>